Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Slide 2 Band of Thieves. Last time, we took out the last of the generators to weaken Neela into a state in which we are able to now successfully attack her. We have Carmelita on her way here to help out the game to take Neela out once and for all. However, we need to activate the radio beacons around the blimp so that way she can hone in on our position so she can help us out. We also got uh, the last vault ability in the game, which is the shadow power, and we will take a look at that as soon as we go and do a little bit of shopping. I did a little off-screen grinding of some money just so we could get a little bit more in our pocket to buy some of the gadgets here. We can get one of the three right now, but once we get the last of the treasure, then we will most definitely be able to grab the other two. If not, then I'll just do like a, a quick... Uh, fade away and fade back when I get the rest of the money to get the final gadget for the game. But for now, since we have to go out with Sly, let's grab the Feral Pounds for him and let's swap on over to him. Let's just move on over here to the Feral Pounds. The Feral Pounds has the ability to jump over vast distances. This is good as it is actually very invaluable for the final fight against Neela, but also it's one of the three abilities needed to grab the clue bottle that's at the top of the little awning overhang whatever that is right there where the clue bottle was you could get it with murray or you could get it with bentley or if you get it with sly if you got the feral pounds basically it's a pretty it's more of a long jump than a high jump but you can really cover vast distances with it also it's just fun to see sly just leapfrog all over the place here and does a little bit of a roll at the end all right now, there's also still the matter of the last two treasures out on the airship. One that is down at the bottom part of the back of the airship, and one that is up at the, not that, no wait, yeah, that one, the destroyed generator up there. We can't get them right now, though, because we got this thing on our back, and it takes up the space, so we can't snag any of the treasure. We could technically head out with Bentley or Murray to grab the treasure, but seeing as how they're both booby trap treasures, I'd rather go with Sly just so that way we can stay uh, very vertical with them. So, we'll do this mission, d see what the matter of the stain on my back is, and then once we're done with that, we'll grab the last of the treasure and then take the final fight to Clockla. Okay, Sly, we need to send Carmelita a radio pulse so she can home in on the blimp. To do that, I'll need you to get on top of four very tall towers. They are too big to climb, and too tall to jump up normally. What's this all got to do with this thing you've got me wearing? It's an experimental mega jump pack. By pressing the R2 button, you'll perform a huge jump. So be careful. All right. Sounds like fun. Bentley, are you sure this is an experimental pack or the battery pack you had when you were in the Contessa's Crips? Eh, if you think about it, maybe it was just Bentley taking the battery pack, doing some sciencey stuff with it, and repurposed it into the Mega Jump pack. Which is a nice little thing, if that's actually the, the case. But yeah, basically, we get a super high jump. To go with our long jump with the Feral Pounce, we are basically able to cover every single distance known to man to fly. So we're going to get to the top of the four towers here. I'm actually going to go in... We're going to go here, here... Yeah, you know what, we're just going one big circle. I was going to say maybe save that one back there for last, but then again, this is going to be so high we could just paraglide down to the treasure that's up there at the generator. Alright, speaking of paraglide, I better paraglide right now or else I'm not going to make that jump. Just jump on over here. The thing about the jump pack is you can actually use it while you're on the Ninja Spire or if you're doing the rail walk, which is actually pretty cool. I think it's the only gadget that allows you to do something when you're on those. And also, just to show it off, it actually shows up right there, which is cool. Uh, yep. And yep, we'll go over the shadow power as soon as we get to the treasures. That way we can, you know, actually utilize it. Just do another mega jump right here. Glide on down over to this. This is probably one of the most fun missions because the mega jump is just such a fun gadget to use. Sadly, it only gets used in this mission, unless you know certain things that I know. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Just grab this guy's treasure real quick, knock him off, and then hop on up over here. One of the other good things about the Mega Jump, it takes no ability power, which, you know, makes sense. This is actually something that's a required gadget to beat the game. And you can't just, you know, land on top of it. You actually have to do the, the Spire Jump onto it. So 
flying over here. I think it actually is possible for you to land on top of Neela as she's flying around because you can, you're, you're much higher than she is. But I think there are some like out of bounds spots where she will like damage you because you know, you're too low, your slide will be unable to stay at that altitude. So top up over here, hop up here once again, and I actually want to see if I can land on Neela as she flies by. J just a little dumb thing I I've always wanted to experiment with. So what I think we're going to do, we're going to save the last jump point for a little bit. We're going to just goof around in the middle part of the airship as we wait for her because I think we can also climb up on top of this spinning whirly gig right here. Or not because there's an invisible wall in front of it. Never mind. Maybe it's possible to get up there if you jumped on that and then Mega jumped over here. Uh, actually, no, second thought, probably not, seeing as how it's uh, a bit of ways away. Alright, where's Neela? There she is. Uh, nope, I missed it. Alright. I don't want to waste too much time uh, just trying to jump onto her. Maybe it'll be something I do post game, and if it actually does happen, and I'm able to pull it off, then maybe we'll I'll show it off in like a post game bonus section. Who knows? Either way, let's hop up over here, hop up here, hop up over here, glide on down over here, hop up here, hop up one more time, and land on the radio. That honestly looks like a naval mine to me. Alright, Carmelita is on the way. We'll go meet her in just a little bit, but for now, I've got some treasure to pilfer. And thankfully, now that my back is free, we can go snag the last two treasures out here. And also, probably should equip the Shadow Power back on the slide because it automatically de equips the Mega Jump. Let's just grab the. Okay, never mind. I was gonna grab the treasure that this guy had, but it's not letting me do that. Grab the egg and make a run for it. And completely get shredded by the propeller. Oh god, that shredded twice by the propellers. <sighs> I'll be right back, people. All right, got ourselves our treasure. Time to hop on over here. Hopefully not get shredded by the propellers this time. And make a run right back to the safe house. So let's so make a way over here. Thankfully, I don't think there's any guards nearby if the flashlight guard was... Oh, no, nope, one's coming out that way. Thankfully, we can now make this jump. Jump on over here. Land on top of this little platform. Hop on down over here. And I'm going to go right just so that... I that I don't accidentally jump into the final mission of the game. So we're just going to sneak past this guy as much as I would love to relieve him of his treasure. I probably could have, but I didn't want to take any chances of losing the eggs. And there we go. All right, I'll see you at the final treasure of the game, and we'll go snag it and head back to the safe house. All right, man, we finally made it to the final treasure of the game. Now I'm going to wait for this guy to move out of the way because these guys have been... an absolute pain throughout this entire chapter and I just want to make sure that there's nothing to get in my way when I snag this treasure and make a run for it. Alright, should be good. Let's grab this final treasure right here. This is probably the treasure here that has the least amount of time because you only get a minute to get back to the safe house with it. Thankfully, just so long as you don't accidentally jump too high into the propellers, you're pretty easily going to be able to outmaneuver these guys. Drop a smoke bomb right there, throw off any tails. Head on over this way, head on back over to the right, so that way we don't accidentally activate the final mission. Hop up here. Ignore this guy. And into the safe house we go. Don't worry, they won't know where we are. And they're totally not surrounding the safe house as we speak. Alright. For the last time ever, let's sell all our treasure. Let's sell the jeweled egg, the golden headdress, and the golden vase. And we are still just short of our goal to get both Bentley and Murray's gadgets. So 
I think for now, let's grab Murray's. And I'll be right back one more time so I can snag the last of the money we need to get for Bentley's gadget. So I'll see you all in just a bit. All right, after much thievery and a lot of grinding off the guards for money, mostly the flashlight guards, I really feel bad for those guys' checkbooks, it's time to grab the final gadget in the game for Bentley, the temporal lock. Being able to freeze time around the guards, basically, it's the ultimate move you could get in Sly 1 for Sly, but this time it's only for Bentley. There we go. That's all the gadgets. All the loot has been sold. It's time to pick up Sly and head out for the last time to take out Nilo once and for all. That's not flirty chit chat. That's got to be hands down the best hidden sexual in window in this game by far. That and also Sly not preferring to go go through the back instead of the front. Don't let up. You're doing great. All right. So basically, the the fight with Nila pretty simple. Honestly, I kind of preferred the fight against Clockwork in the first game compared to this, even though that one was a bit easy itself. All you gotta do, it's just basically a tail gunner mission, it, uh, like what Bentley did when he was in the helicopter back in the jungle, or what Murray did to shoot down the helicopter at Rajan's party. All you gotta do, really, hit the red ones most of all, because those ones take multiple hits to take out. Uh, yellow ones are one-shot takeouts. Just keep hitting those. Keep nailing that. Uh, one thing I don't like about this is the fact that it seems like Carmelia's gun is the one that overheats the fastest in the game uh, compared to the helicopter one or the stationary gun one. All right, I found another missile being shot over there. The best thing about uh, fighting Nila, most of all, is probably the fact that she's a very big target, so it's very easy to hit her. After about a quarter of her damage being taken away, she'll start doing the little rain attack that Clockwork used to do. And also, throughout this fight, she will start charging up a eye beam to shoot at you. You'll be able to tell when it's going to go off because you'll hear a distinct sound to it. And also, you'll see her eyes starting to glow a little bit. So you need to definitely start hitting her and doing as much damage as you can to keep her from actually doing that. Just got to keep hitting those rains. Make sure they don't... Uh, have the electricity on the inside when they pass through us. I think at this point she's just going to start shooting rains at us now instead of just using missiles. Which, you'd think, being a competent villain, she would want to, you know, use a combination of both, but it seems like she's m more preferable to rains. Maybe she's a big Superman 64 fan. Alright. A little over half her health has been taken care of. Just keep shooting the rains. Honestly, I feel like as the fight goes on, it gets a lot easier. She doesn't go too overboard with the rains. You just really need to make sure you don't accidentally double shoot the rains. Hit that one. All right, so far her eyes aren't glowing. Oh, now she's doing the mixture of missiles and rings. And it looks like she's only going to start shooting the red missiles now at this point. Yep, definitely the red missiles. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, that one hurt quite a bit. Well, fly more steady then. I think we've already fully gotten her attention, Carmelita. There we go. Got her. I feel bad for that poor flashlight guard as everything's exploding around him. Of course it wouldn't be that easy. Of course. It wasn't that easy when we took out Clockwork, so of course Neil is gonna take twice as much firepower to take care of. I'm coming, guys. Hold on. Alright. 
Now, this is the reason why I said you should have the Feral Pounce on you, because this section is made pretty easy when if you have that Pounce on you. If not, then it's not that hard, but it definitely is a bit of a jumping challenge. Basically, just gotta hop to next pieces of the destroyed airship as we make our way over to Neela. As you can see, she is flying way up ahead. Aw, oh, Murray. Let's break this, jump over here onto this uh, this generator. I do like these are actual parts. That it, they didn't just uh, just make up random debris from it. It's actually parts of the level that are, have been scattered apart around. You can see, I, I don't know how the the side blimps got, took any damage when Neela just crashed. I guess maybe like the explosion caused shrapnel to fly out and hit the blimps. That might be the case. No, the TV! I don't even remember seeing a TV on the airship. Alright, hop on over to whatever this thing is. And it'll just be one last hop onto Neela. You might have a new body, Neela, but you're still the low-down, backstabbing coward we've beaten time and time again. This won't be any different. Be brave while you can, Cooper. I might not have the immortality you want for your hate, but I feel some of it. Some power growing within me. That power's not going to do you much good if I can get up close and personal and smack you with the cane. Can't hit her anymore with this. And honestly, at this point, you could just ride Neela as long as you want. You just hop right here and just do that. But you know what? Let's finish off with style. Or not, I guess I can't. I, I can stand on her head and just watch the destruction around us. Now, there's something I want to talk about as we wait to lay the final blow onto Neela. Is what she says when she says she feels a power growing within her how she can't really use the Northern Lights to make herself immortal. It's very highly speculated that uh, the way Neela changes and how she kind of has this god complex inside her now, it's actually clockwork waking up slowly and taking control of her body, or most likely of her consciousness, and he's just taking his body back from her. Either way, body or not, gonna finish her off with a couple more cane swipes, take out both of the eyes, and down she goes. out that thing's still kicking Clockla mentioned something about a hate chip it sounded like the source of her power if we remove it she might stop attacking then let's do a little open head surgery I'll pry open that beak so that Bentley can go to town with his bombs Sly you've done enough for this fight all right the Aang's all here. Neela's right over there. One more jumping puzzle stands between us and victory, so let's head on over here and do a little open head surgery. There you are, Neela. I hate you, Rufa Gang. I will find you in your sleep and I will destroy you. You will never know a moment's peace for the breath of your sharp, miserable lives. The clock lock will know this. Like I said, very highly speculated that it's actually clockwork starting to slowly take over her mind. That or she's just uh, gotten too drunk with power and she's gone in completely insane. Either or. There's one taken care of. Uh oh, not there. Oh, okay, I guess it does do the job. I honestly thought I did more damage to Murray than I did to Neela there. Alright. All that's left is the hate ship. Let's finish this once and for all. Let's get out of here. She's about to explode. Ah! My glasses. Huh? Bentley, I'll save 
find you. Pick me up. I can't walk. Come on, Sly, let's get out of here. And there we were, at the end of the road. The claw gang had been defeated, and the clockwork parts lay scattered around in heaps. Yet, despite the explosion, they remained pristine. It was as if nothing could ever hurt them. Carmelita cursed herself for showing up too late to get a few shots in on Clockla. So she took it out on what was close at hand, the hate chip. And just like that, it was over. Without that core piece, that essential center of clockwork, there was nothing left. The parts aged before our eyes as if time had finally caught up with the ancient bird. How ironic that Carmelita, a police officer, would be the one to lift the curse from the Cooper family. The menace of clockwork would never again rise to threaten me or my children. True to her nature, she informed us that we were all under arrest. But one look at my gang told me that we were in no shape for a fast getaway. So I offered to go peacefully in exchange for letting my friends walk. They'd taken some bruises through all of this, but I was surprised, shocked really, to see them leave their gear behind as they walked away. Their wounds were deeper than I'd imagined. Those guys were hurting. Carmelita's old police unit soon arrived. With me in custody, her name was cleared, and she even got a well-deserved promotion. It was the least I could do. The ride to HQ started with us sitting in silence, trying to read each other's thoughts. As the reality of my capture started to sink in, she began to relax, and we got to talking. We spoke freely about our previous adventures, comparing notes and even getting in a few laughs. Then we started talking about, well, everything, books, music, art. It was like we were on a first date. She even showed me the bottle she'd been saving for the special occasion of my arrest. My heart sank when she realized that our short flight across town had already taken two hours, a fact I kind of clued into after seeing the Eiffel Tower float by 17 times. She went forward to ask the pilot what was up, and it looked like my pals had left me a little going away present before taking off. Floating away on the night breeze, I could faintly make out Carmelita's voice. I'll find you, Cooper! I'll be seeing you soon, Green Tail. And there we go. That's it. Sly 2 Band of Thieves is now done. Still hands down my favorite in the entire series and one of my all-time favorite games and favorite PS2 games out there. This definitely took the formula of the first game, built upon it, and I would almost say nearly perfected it because they never went back to the old formula of Sly of like being making it level-based instead of mission-based. Were there a couple things I didn't like about this game? Yeah, it's not perfect, but then again, no game is. But there is something I have to admit. I, I, I just love this game to no end. I, I, I will never say anything bad about this game. Aside from Jailbreak, I still don't like that mission as much. I've grown to like it a little bit more, but nowhere near as much as... I don't hate it nearly as much as I used to as a kid. And of course, Sly... Once again, had to mess with Carmelita one more time. Inspector Carmelita Fox continues the search for Sly Cooper, whose current whereabouts are still unknown. <sighs> it's been quite a ride. Dimitri went to work as a dance instructor on a cruise ship. I, this is something I do like that this game has that the first one didn't. A, a little where are they now? Rajan now owns a series of rug outlets across North America. And some I like is the fact that the members of the Claw Gang actually managed to turn themselves around. Such as the Contessa went to become the most successful real estate agent broker 
even though she still is a cold-blooded murderer. Jambasan went to go work for the EPA. And ended up frozen yet again on a rescue mission saving baby penguins. Poor guy. Arpeggio! Oh, right, he's dead. Neela! Oh, right, we killed her. Well, that's it, people. Now, that doesn't mean our adventure with the game is over just yet. While we are 100% done, there's still a 100% reward. There's also some secrets and a couple other things I wanted to show about this game, both in the game, the old version of Sly, and also something outside the game itself. However, that's going to be relegated to its own bonus segment. So, once again, next time on Sly 2 Band of Thieves, we're going to go over some of the bonus and completionist stuff that you get for, you know, get 100% and also the other little Easter eggs and little outside things I wanted to talk about with this game. I'll see you all next time.